All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. We are on the uh, C47 Sky Strain table today. Today I'm uh, teaching you how to build what is easily one of my favorite kits out there right now. This is the Animal Motorworks AMW Pro X 4 inch all fiberglass bigger daddy. I love upscales. I've got their Red Max as well. I've got a 6 inch all fiberglass Red Max upscale. And they have a 5.5 inch one too that I really want. But this thing is one of two rockets I'll be building and shipping down to Kansas to fly at Airfest. We're going to put a CTI K740 Sea Star in this. You know what you think? It's a very small rocket for that. You'd be correct. So basically, it's just going to be kind of like an instructional video on how to build this kit if you happen to have one. It's pretty straightforward, but we'll go through. There is one thing I'm amending, though. I won't be using this because if I put this in the coupler, then I can't fit K motors in there. And what's the point, right? They do have a donut av bay for this thing if you want to do dual deploy. Uh, but I'm just going to fly it simple motor deploy, no retainer. We're just going to use a mirror clip, keep everything cheap, simple, five minute epoxy, small little parachute, a little bit of Kevlar shock cord, and that's it. Just keep it everything simple. If we lose it, it's not the end of the world, but we're just gonna fly it on K motors. We don't need to know how high it went. It'll go like 6,000-ish on the K740. Throw a tracker in it, go get it. So uh, I'm gonna throw you guys into voiceover mode and I'm gonna start working on this rocket. We're going to start where we start with every fiberglass kit, sanding. Generously sand every part of the rocket that's going to be a bonding surface. Anything that you'll be putting epoxy on, you want a pretty aggressive bite with. I was using 80 grit sandpaper and uh, I tried to make sure I got everything that was going to be glued but kind of forgot some spots had to go back a couple times. But you know how it is. After sanding, send all your components for a nice swim to make sure they're all clear of dust before you start gluing stuff together. While you're letting things soak, measure out exactly three arm lengths of a person who's six foot three worth of quarter inch tubular Kevlar, or about 15 feet. Drain the water and just as important as making sure everything is clean before you glue it together is making sure it's dry. So take every component out, hand dry it, and then let it sit for probably a good 15 to 20 minutes before you start bonding. After everything's dry, measure the root length of your fin, which is going to be what you use as a reference as to where you need to glue your centering rings on the motor tube. In the case of this kit, right about six and five eighths. From there, place your rear centering ring wherever you're going to want it. Some people like it flush, but I left half an inch to allow for a future install of an aero pack adapter if I feel like it, or really just so that I could fit a 542560 case without the tip of it touching the inside of the nose. Either way, I like to use masking tape to keep things in place and then use the fin root to make sure that that measurement is consistent across all the fins before we start gluing stuff in place. I'm using 5 minute Bob Smith epoxy that I also bought from AMW at LDRS 39, so thanks Gloria. In this clip you can see I filed out a small divot in the upper centering ring that allows the Kevlar shock cord to pass through it. That way I can ensure that the Kevlar shock cord has a good solid mounting point because there's not quite enough room to get a U-bolt in there. You could do an I-bolt if you wanted, but this method is nice and simple. You can also see I tied a knot in it on the other side of the centering ring, so if the epoxy ever lets go, the knot will stop it at the centering ring as well. Right here I'm going back over all the fin slots and surrounding areas just to make sure one, that the fins fit okay, and two, that everything there will be epoxy fillet attached to later is properly sanded right now. Getting into those small areas once the fins are glued in can be a little complex, so it's good to scuff everything up in the first place. After we test fit all our fins and make sure everything works, I wiped it down with denatured alcohol and we started gluing. Once again, the 5 minute Bob Smith epoxy comes out and this kit was actually super easy to glue the motor tube assembly in because you can reach in from both ends of the airframe tube and get the epoxy beads right where you want them on either end of the fin slot and then just slide it all in and it was ready to go. Important note though, if you use my technique with the Kevlar shock cord, make sure you do not line that shock cord up with a fin slot. You will have a very bad time if you do. As you can see, I'm a bit impatient, so once I was confident that the motor tube assembly was where I wanted it, I immediately put some more epoxy on one of the fins and got the first one tacked in place. That way we could uh, keep things moving smoothly. 
Some people like to use fin guides in pretty much all scenarios, but with simple builds like this, especially with through the wall and such tight tolerances, thanks to AMW, fin slots are very good. Uh, it was pretty easy to get the fins on straight, so I just eyeballed it. And uh, once you've repeated that whole process three more times, you've got yourself a big daddy. All right, well that concludes the first uh, bit of construction there. Pretty easy assembly. Um, I glued the nose cone on, or the nose cone shoulder in, and I'm just going to tie this around like a small nut, and then throw this in the bottom and put a puddle of epoxy up there. No electronics, just fly a motor deploy, but uh, yeah. So this video is not over, I'm going to do this all in like one shot, so I'll be back here probably tomorrow to do some fills, but I'm also getting ready to start on my other Airfest project, which is a minimum diameter. Yada yada yada, you guys already know about that, let's get on to making some fillets, huh? Just because I'm a bit paranoid, I decided to sand everything one more time just to make sure we're going to have a nice proper bond with these fillets. After all, a K motor is a pretty big motor for a rocket this size. And uh, if those fins are going to be wagging, I want something to hold them in place. As always, I'm using West Systems Epoxy with their 406 colloidal silica filler. I spread it out fairly evenly throughout the fillet and then use a smooth object, in this case a 24 millimeter socket covered in denatured alcohol to shape them how I want them. All right, you've seen one fillet get made, you've seen them all get made. You've also seen how I sand my fillets and shape them how I want them, so I'm not going to put you guys through that. But I'm going to do that right now. However, I did want to show you guys a couple things. The sticker set from StickerShock23.com, Marques, came in. These are printed, which is really nice. Uh, I've been buying stuff from Mark since I was like 14. And he, has, he has helped me out a lot. So even though I do have the ability to make my own stickers, I still like to buy, him, buy some from him time to time. Plus, these ones are cool. Like I said, I don't have a printer. So I can't make stuff this nice. I'd have to do multiple layers. And uh, this is just easier. So if you need decals for your rocket, stickershock23.com. And then uh, the first Outside the Rock Tree World uh, partnership here comes from Car Rep Spray. These are 2K automotive paints in spray cans and they don't have activators. They have an unlimited pot life. So they're epoxy based. This is a filler primer, gloss black and an epoxy base 2k clear so that's what we're going to paint the old big daddy with so it should be pretty dang rugged but uh yeah i'm gonna start sanding all right before i put the mask on so you can actually hear me talk we're gonna try out the uh 2k primer here hey can you take these dogs in and tie them to the couch please So I don't know if car rep spray is publicly available in the US yet. They sent it to me because they're preparing to launch it in the US. However, if you want a 2K epoxy based paint, uh, this stuff's good. I like the spray pattern a lot. And uh, this is what I sprayed the nose cone yesterday just to kind of feel it out. And there's some textures in there, but that's not the paint's fault. It's just my prep work. And um, I would be totally fine leaving this, but I'm gonna wet sand it just cause I wanna see how it does. And then I have clear coat as well, which I need to put on the airframe anyway because I have those uh, decals from Mark at Sticker Shock. They're printed decals. He recommends that you clear coat over them. So, but yeah, I like the pattern a lot. The spray pattern it covers really easily. It sticks to the primer really good and to itself really good. So you don't get a lot of run opportunities. I really like the three minute flash off. So you basically finish painting something, go in, grab a sip of water, and then come through another coat on it. It's sandable in 12 hours, fully cures in 12 hours. You can cut, buff it, polish it, and uh, it's epoxy based, so it's pretty scratch and ding resistant. This has two coats on it, and uh, just before I started filming this, I uh, dropped it and bumped it on some stuff. You can see uh, black paint on this rocket actually from knocking it over. So, uh, but the paint's still on there. So I'm gonna wet sand that. I gotta finish sanding the minimum diameter fins. You guys have seen the videos probably on that. And uh, yeah, we're cruising along. All right, two coats on each. I guess technically the nose cone has three coats now, but uh, not not bad. The stuff sprays really nice. The paint is really nice to work with. I say not bad because it's not a very good paint job by my own standards, but it's small rocket that I may just never see again because I'm putting a K in it and I'm kind of out of time. 
All right, like I said, I have my own provisions for making vinyl, but I wanted to get them from Mark because Mark's always been cool to me, and uh, his are printed. I don't have the ability to print. It looks pretty dang good. I didn't do any video of me putting them on because nobody needs to hear all that swearing, but they came out pretty good so far. I just got to do the fin tip ones, but yeah, this paint dried really good. Um, both cans of clear coat that they sent me are cured inside the can, so we're going to have to worry about that some other way, but... As of now, uh, we're just about there. I just gotta finish putting the fin ones on and then uh, I'll show you what I'm doing for my recovery stuff in the nose cone and then that's it. All right, since I won't be using this, uh, this goes into the coupler. You put an eye bolt in there and that's how you mount your, uh, your recovery equipment, but I'm not going to do that because then that limits how long of a motor I can put in there. They do have a donut av bay if you want to do a dual deploy setup but i'm just doing motor eject up to cti six grain loads and those do have motor deploy as an option so here's my solution i just tied the end of my shock cord as you know the other side's attached inside there tied the end to a nut and we're just going to flip the nose cone upside down put this down in the bottom and then add a good amount of epoxy and that's it we're adding a little nose weight to a stubby rocket it's not going to hurt it that's for sure and uh and we'll have a nice solid mounting point on both ends. For anyone curious about the epoxy I'm securing that with, this is West Systems with a pinch of chopped carbon mixed in just for a little extra peace of mind, just like I do my internal fillets with. I just taped the shock cord up to the coupler so that it'll stay where I have it. It's touching the bottom there, and then we're just gonna pour this epoxy in and let it dry for 24 hours, and then she's ready to fly. Also, I realized the tip of the nose cone should be yellow if I want to tr match the traditional Big Daddy scheme. Trust me, uh, I love upscales and it bothers me when little things are wrong with them like how some Red Max kits don't have the right shaped nose cone. What would bother me more in this case is if I painted it yellow and the yellow on the tip was different than the yellow on the decals. So let me just interject here actually. It started bothering me so much that I went ahead and painted the tip yellow later. All right, so if you were to build this kit and follow how it's supposed to be built, the only thing you do differently is you glue this into the coupler and put an eye bolt there to attach your shock cord to, uh, but you just saw how I did it. Anyway, sorry I forgot my tripod, so we're in uh, full vlog mode right here, but there it is. That's the AMW Pro X 4 inch Bigger Daddy. I love this thing. Uh, catch it at Airfest. We're going to put a K740 C Star in it and hopefully get it back. Um, my vinyl installation is not very good. If I did it wet or even sat there and pushed all the bubbles out, it's doable. It really is. It's just I'm impatient. But I'm glad this thing is ready to go. Uh, this rocket and the minimum diameter are going to get shipped to my buddy in Kansas City to bring to Argonia. And then uh, we're flying a couple K motors and I'll be out there filming uh, for those complaining about the smudge on the lens that I didn't realize was there until after the whole event had been filmed. Uh, I bought a new lens, so took care of that issue. Um, yeah, at any rate, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little uh, how-to-ish build series on the, uh, on the AMW Pro X 4-inch Bigger Daddy. Uh, if you aren't subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. It says like 85% of my viewership isn't subscribed. When we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to try and set up another giveaway. It would be cool if we could get like 100,000 subscribers and we could just keep getting people into rocketry and uh, keep the hobby that we know and love alive. So that's all I got for you this time. Just subscribe and share these videos and I'll see you guys at launches. Take it easy.